Over a period of 18 years, Harriet Walters stole some $48 million from the District of Columbia. She did this by fabricating property tax refunds, and then she took the money for herself and for her accomplices. This is the first of two cases that run some data analytics on Harriet's numbers. These are the fraudulent numbers. We can see Harriet started in 1989, <clears throat> 1989 being an album by Taylor Swift. And she started with amounts that looked something like $4,000 a time. By the time that the scheme ended in uh, 2007, Harriet was stealing amounts that looked closer to 400,000, 450,000, 410,000, and the like. These are the amounts that Harriet stole. Let's do some analysis. I'm going to do a little hitting here. Statistics. We can widen it a bit. And question number one says, give the sum of all the amounts and we can do equal sum. And Harriet's numbers are in D1 to D240. There we go. Let's format this. And we can format this as currency. Looks like we need a little bit more space here. There we go. This is indeed the sum of Harriet's 239 amounts, and we have a heading row, which is why we go down to 240. Part number two says, does the total calculated agree with some or other um, source documents? And this is because, well, we're going to do this test, because we care about completeness. We want to know that we are analyzing all the data. So see what the source is, and uh, the answer to this question is uh, either a yes or a no. Calculate the average amount. All we would do is change the word sum to average, and we would go enter, and we would have the average amount. Number four, the maximum amount. And in Excel, the command for maximum amount is max. And indeed, let's zoom this a bit here. Max would do it. There we go. The number of negative amounts. In order to do this, we would have to use count if, and we would go equal count if. Oops, not count if, count if. And we would go with the range D2 to D240, comma. Quotes. I'm going to go less than 10,000. And this is not going to give you the number of negative amounts. Because for the number of negative amounts, you'll have to go less than zero. But we'll do less than 10,000 as guidance. And there we can see we have 24. It's still formatted as currency. And if we change this to 5,000, we should have fewer amounts. We have 23. And if we go less than zero, we will get the number of negative amounts. Number six, how many fraudulent refunds were equal to or greater than 400,000, but less than 500,000? So... For this, we are going to use count ifs. We keep the range, and we will go um, greater than or equal to, and for the guidance, we'll do 450,000. So greater than or equal to, comma, the same range, D2 to D240. Quotes again, but it said less than 500,000, so we go less than 500,000. And this is, sorry about that, this is greater than or equal to 450,000, but less than 500,000. Enter. I get 14. Your range 
is greater than 400,000, your range is wider, you should get either 14 numbers or more. Now we're going to do some Benford's Law. We're going to run the first digit test on the fraud amounts greater than or equal to 10. To do this, we need to go here and we need to highlight the Harriet numbers. And now I have a beautiful highlight there. Copy. I'm in my Negrini cycle. I go to Data. And I go to D1. It just so happens to be D. That's just coincidence. Paste. Now I have Harriet's numbers here, but I need to copy the formula down. But let me check the formula first. It said greater than or equal to 10. If D2 greater than or equal to 10, that formula is good. D2 greater than or equal to 10, that formula is good. 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 All her amounts are greater than or equal to 10. So the formulas are good. I need to do the copy down. There we go. Now that I've copied down, it's going to calculate all the first digits that are needed. And the question here was, run the first digit test. And to do that, since we've done most of the work, we can just go to first digits. There we have it. This is my graph. And I can just check my graph. Uh, this is chapter 13 in my book, Forensic Analytics. And this has the entire, everything you ever wanted to know about Harriet's case. 13.5 is my first digit graph. They agree. Looks good to me. The next one is, what is the mean absolute deviation of the first digits? You sell F12. The easy answer here is, that is the mean absolute deviation. Let's zoom a little bit. We have a new meaning for zoom in 2020 and 2021. That is my mean absolute deviation. What does it actually mean, if you'll excuse the humor? This is my deviation. This is Benford's law. These are the Benford proportions. 0.301, 17.6, uh, 12.5%. The deviation is that gap there. There's no deviation here, and there's no deviation there. I have a deviation here, here, here. I have um, essentially seven deviations. These two are close to zero. And the mean absolute deviation calculates the mean, the average size of the deviation. The lower the deviation, the better the fit to Benford's Law, because it means they will all look something like that. I saw my mean absolute deviation. If I want to draw some conclusion, I would go to table 4.2 in the book. First digits, this is the range, and these are the conclusions from close conformity to non-conformity and for the first digits, I was really in this zone, way above 0 0.015, non-conformity, which should make sense. That graph is pretty bad. Run the second digit test. You don't really have to run anything. Simply go here, click. There it is. And I have the second digits. We can see from this, uh, the second digits go from 0 to 9. This is Benford's Law going from about 12% down to 8.5%. Harriet really liked the 2s. Many more 2s than even expected under Benford's Law, and she sure didn't like 0 as the second digit. The answer to number 9, run the second digit test. There it is. Run the last two digit test. Use the sense. So we have to just have a little closer look over here. There's my data. The last two digits being the cents. There's a double O there. And there's an O. The tens and units could be the last two digits, which would be the six and the zero. 
or in this case the 4 and the 8 would be the last two digits if these were integers and the double 6 are the cents but I want the cents as the last two digits we have this correctly calculated here and if I click on this graph cents there we go from this we can see Harriet loved the numbers to end in double zero in other words a round dollar with no cents about one third of her numbers ended in double zero and nothing else really popped out here as being uh, used in excess and some of the digits in fact uh, digit combination were not used if you have one in your class review the case submission checklist and I just remind you about uh, for my class what I ask is that you don't you end up giving screenshots of a graph like this that is an entire page or half a page full shrink it a bit that's the first Harriet Walters case bye bye